All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's KB5MIQ, big boy. Thought we'd uh, come back and talk a little bit about a few things. First of all, I want to talk about a 160-meter dipole I just put up. Uh, put it up over the weekend, and like I, my ham radio channel is devoted to uh, trying to help new hams and ham radio on a budget. And I'm not going to video that dipole, but I assure you it falls into on the budget parameters. But I guarantee you, any of the experts see that dipole, their heads are going to explode. But anyway, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, half wave dipole for the uh, frequency I put in, I believe, was 126 feet 9 inches using dipole calculator. And I manually calculated it, and I use a dipole calculator. New hams especially, bear in mind with this, when you're using a dipole calculator, that's based on perfect conditions. All the parameters met, because normally, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but if you put a half wave dipole up, optimal, op, optimally it's supposed to be a quarter wave off the ground. And here's ham radio cat. Indy has to go up here and make herself seen. All right, baby, get up there and get on the chair. Anyway, it needs to be a quarter wave off the ground. Well, when you're dealing with 160 meters, it's one of the reasons not a whole lot of, come on, move your butt, can <laughs> A lot of people don't use it is because of the sheer size of it and, does, and don't think getting it off the ground far enough will help it work right. And I'll be the first to admit, antenna height is everything. It will work, you know, it'll, it'll work, work better the higher it is. All right, buddy. All right. 160 meter dipole, a little over 250 feet long. Quarter wave of that would be 125 feet in the air. That's one reason very few hams use it. There's a lot of, uh, there is some work on 160, but I'm, I've never been on 160. Hopefully this winter I can make some contacts with it. WD5HKV kind of taught me into putting that antenna up. And uh, so we got, got mine up. He's putting his up this week. Now, he had talked to some hams on some forums that work 160 with dipoles that are only 30, 40 foot off the ground with the ends probably 15 foot off the ground. And they claim they have good luck with it. Well, I did that. Mine is 30 foot center point and the ends are probably 15 feet off the ground. Which is not right, I know. I know it's not, it's not right according to everything you ever read about building an antenna. But here's what I run into. The resonant point at that length, that off the dipole calculator, it was resonant below the bottom of the 660 meter band. Because the first time I checked SWR now, I'm using the AM carrier with this meter and the auxiliary meter both set to SWR so I can compare it. I don't have a CW key hooked up. So I just used the AM to send a carrier out to check it. And the initial measurements I made, and, my, and it's hard to measure that length of wire by yourself, but I actually taped the end of the wire to a tape measure, 100 foot tape, clamped that to a fence post, measured 100 foot, marked it, come back, and added the other 26 foot 9 inches. Well, when I first checked the SWR, it was way high in the foam portion, and in the CW portion, at the very bottom of the band, it was 2 to 1. Well, me and HKV talked, knowing we, he helped me decide that uh, going up in frequency, we need to shorten the antenna. So I started shortening it. First time I just cut six and three inches off each end, which didn't even phase it. So I started cutting a foot. Make a long story short, I made about four adjustments on this thing, or five, made my final adjustment today. And I'm gonna read y'all the SWR readings I got. And I've cut probably six foot off the total length of this antenna. That is not saying the calculator's wrong at all. I'm saying that's probably because it's so close to the ground and was affecting it. But anyway, uh, when I checked it this morning, I made my final adjustment a while ago. At 1.80, I was one-to-one -one SWR from yesterday. Now it's 1.5. At 1.830, I'm one-to-one. And kind of one to one, a little over one to one at 1 1.4. 1 1.5, it was two to one there yesterday. I'm at 1.2 today. 1 1.86, it was two and a half there yesterday. I'm 1.5 today. 
1.87 yesterday was high, and I'm at 1.9 today. 1.80, I didn't even check yesterday, it was high, but 2 to 1, maybe 2.2 to 1. At 1.890, I'm still testing 2.5 to 1, and the high SWR hadn't come on on my radio yet. So that's going to give me from 1840 to 870 to operate real good in the phone portion. Because looking at uh, what the fan plan is, you can do phone out to 2000, to 2000, the 2.0. But when you get up into 1.910, you get into SSB QRP and 1.99 to 200 beacon. So I figure best voice would be 840 to 870, 880. Anybody knows it works 160, leave me some comments on it. I'd like to know a little bit more about it. And uh, play, hopefully this winter I can make some contacts with it. But it is a bugger of an antenna to put up. And I put mine up by myself. And after having dealt with 250 foot of 14 gauge wire, rope on my pulley to pull it up my pole, coax, if I ever fall out of an airplane, I don't want a parachute. I just want a wad of that mess because it'll hang on something before it hits the ground, I promise you. Uh, be safe putting that up. Don't drink. Uh, I like to drink beer. I really do. And I'm not talking about drinking from a fall and hurt yourself standpoint. By Saturday evening, I was so aggravated with it. I was ready to wad the whole mess up, put it in the trash, because I kept getting tangled up on me, twisted, going up the pole. So I stopped for the night, got me a better plan ready, and uh, went from there and got it up successfully. And today I've made my final adjustment. I'm not going to adjust it anymore. But Leave me some comments about 160. I've never worked 160. First time I've ever had an antenna up, and I'll be the first to admit, it's not according to, to what everybody will tell you how you put a dipole up, but for the length of room I got, it's what I had to do. All right, so now we're just gonna talk a little bit about some general things I've seen on social media lately, uh, condescending answers that new hams get. Now. Everybody needs to remember this. We were all new hams at one time. Uh, and I've said in one of my earlier videos, I don't work CW. I can't hear it. I have a hearing issue. I could have upgraded back in the 90s from that hearing issue, and I wouldn't do it because I knew how bad it was looked upon. But being condescending to new hams is not helping our hobby. We're hurting this hobby's hurt enough from the internet and cell phones and young people not being interested in it. We need to keep people interested in this hobby. So if you're asked something, just give them an honest answer. Don't give them a condescending answer and don't don't be smart about it. I'll give you a couple examples. This happened to me. I was on a local repeater not long after I upgraded to Tech 91. Uh, talking to an older ham, just welcome me into the hobby and did everything like that. And he said, uh, have you got your code speed up yet? Or have you done your general class 13 a minute? And I said, no, sir, I, I can't hear it. I barely passed five. And honestly, I wish they would do away with the code and make all the questions tougher, make it a harder test for electronic theory. And we've been talking about 20 minutes, having a very nice conversation. And when I unkeyed the mic, he said, young man, I have worked 20 word per minute CW, have all my life, and I don't care to talk to you anymore. This is whatever his call sign was, goodbye. And that was it. I said, if you hear me on here, don't contact me. Hmm, okay. Uh, one of the other videos I mentioned after they dropped the code, I had a club not test me. And I told them I was coming. And they, they didn't like no code generals. They wouldn't test me. Let it, let it go. Don't worry about it. I saw some comments yesterday, a guy come up talking about his budget for a new station, he was a new ham, and I heard, I seen everything under the sun, people was telling him, well, well that budget ain't enough for your lightning protection in your grounding system, and I'm thinking, like, really? That ain't my lightning protection, it's I unplug my radio, I don't leave my radio plugged in unless I'm talking on it, well, that's my lightning protection, now I do have my panel board of antennas grounded. I got a ground rod to ground and grounded there and I got a stud through it I hooked my radio to. So I do ground my radio when I'm operating. But when I ain't operating, ain't nothing hooked up. Now, 
take these guys that's got a whole wall of radios mounted in their shack. They may leave their stuff plugged in all the time, and that's great. They want to do it, and they got the money to spend on that. That's great. The point I'm trying to make is this hobby, you can spend what you want on it. Okay, spend what you can afford. Don't break the bank. My first HF radio, I had to sell a gun to buy it because I didn't have any extra money. I sold a gun to buy my first HF radio. And speaking of that, it was an ICOM 701. I don't know how many of you remember that. But it came with a matching power supply speaker and a matching ICOM desk mic. Radio worked good for years. Kind of wished I'd have kept it and tried to find somebody to fix it. The receive went out in it after about 15, 18 years of me owning it. And uh, so I just I sold it to a guy at a hamcom out in Dallas several years ago. But Talking about old hams saying things to young hams that they shouldn't. I had an old ham told me, you need to get a real radio. What? What's wrong with my radio? The VFO knob is over on the side. It's not in the center. It don't look right. That's not a real radio. You need to get you a Tentec or a Kenwood that's got the VFO knob in the center. And I'm sitting there thinking, really? You know, if you put the speaker right by the radio, it all looks like one unit, and it makes the VFO knob kind of in the center there, but... I just let it go, went on, kept operating my old 701. So, you'll hear everything under the sun about this hobby. You'll get all kinds of advice. I urge you to take it with a grain of salt. Look for the information in the advice, but don't look at how the advice is given, If especially if it's given in a condescending manner or told you don't know anything. There's always hams out there helpful that will try to help you with this hobby. And like I said on every video, uh, KB5MIQ is my call sign. My email is listed on my QRZ page. Send me a direct email. You got a question, I'll try to help you any way I can. And like I said earlier, anybody's got 160 experience, give me some tips on 160 because I hope to work some of the band if the band opens up this winter and it gets cold. All right, well, that's all I got for today. Hope everybody's having a great week. Thanks for everybody who subscribed. I gained about seven subscribers over the weekend. I'm proud to do that. I enjoy doing this, try to promote the hobby any way I can. We still have our nightly round table on 10 meters on 28,450. The group I'm in, we're all the ground wave distance. But somehow we have some other people check in from around the country, and we've made some country contacts doing that before. So please, if you hear us on 28,450 about 8 o'clock Central Standard Time, please check in. We, we, we love to hear everybody check in on that if we can. All right, everybody have a great week. This is KB5MIQ Big Boy. Thanks to all subscribers. Save me three.